Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the talk. I'm Shivan Shu, uh, founding engineer at Signals, uh, also CNCF ambassador and mem member and contributor to Open Telemetry. And I'm Ludmila Malkova. I work on Azure SDKs and messaging better than Kafka. Sorry, I didn't say this. Uh, and I'm a member of uh, Open Telemetry Technical Committee and maintainer of semantic conventions. Uh, we'll be diving deep into how you can leverage Open Telemetry to do some uh, deep observatory into your asynchronous, asynchronous systems like uh, Kafka and other messaging queues. So let's get started. So I think uh, systems are inherently complex and uh, what can go wrong when you are running them? So honestly, a lot of things can go wrong. From message loss to partition loading, there are many key components that you need to take care. They are complex. They, like, the end users who are configuring the producers and consumers struggle with the configurations and the cluster managers uh, face different problems with observability when they are managing at a scale. And uh, let's see how the magic happens inside uh, any queue. So for example, if in Kafka, on a high level, a, partition, a producer is writing to a partition in a given broker, and multiple consumer instances from a consumer group reads from it. But under the hood, a lot of things are happening inside Kafka, which makes it feasible. Uh, and these things are complex. Though uh, Kafka provides a lot of uh, metrics from the JMX server, um, there are many things that you won't be able to figure it out. For, for example, there's no way to correlate traces with the metrics. Some other cues, for example, RabbitMQ or Celery, uh, in some way follows the same pattern where there is some queue inside the given broker, given node. There are plenty of queues. Uh, so from RabbitMQ to StreamZ, there is a bunch of queues that people are using in production. And uh, what you don't see on broker matrix, specifically on Kafka, is um, how, how to get partition-level partition visibility for a lot of things. End-to-end um, -end latency for producer and consumer uh, messages. And Oops. you get the consumer group lag, but there is no way to actually correlate natively in Kafka with the consumer and producer spans. So for example, here, uh, multiple consumer service instance are reading from different partitions for, for a consumer group. If the consumer group lag is increasing, we don't know actually which combination of producer and consumer services are uh, involved in that. There are infrastructure monitoring gaps. Um, when you are managing Kafka at a scale, there are many things that you need to take care of from g ma metrics to broker metrics. There's also a problem of noisy neighbors. So for example, a producer client one and producer client two, both are using the same key to write on a given partition. And if the producer client one scales up, then there would be some lag in terms of the messages coming from client two. And that would create some problem to receive the message from the producer client two. This is basically a misconfiguration, but the consumer group lag does not give information about how to fine tune that. From Kafka, we, there's, there's no way to actually uh, correlate the Kafka matrix with the trace, trace with logs, and trace with matrix. Uh, let's see how Open Telemetry can help us. Yeah. Yeah, so your typical Kafka application or messaging part of your system looks like a bunch of producers, a bunch of consumers, right, and the broker in the middle. If you self-host, you're exposed to a lot more complexity. But let's talk quickly about what we can get out of uh, this application um, in terms of telemetry today. So you would probably expect up in telemetry instrumentation. Yeah, there are, there are a few in different languages uh, that kind of interact with Kafka SDK. Uh, to either uh, pull some data like metrics from it or maybe wrap calls or uh, do bytecode instrumentation. Anyway, so this is the, the effectively thing that interacts on your client with Kafka SDK. And Open Telemetry gives you uh, ability to export this data virtually anywhere. Um, 
So client side looks good. So you have instrumentation libraries for other things. We have a, uh, we will talk about what the telemetry looks like in a second. The broker side is getting trickier. Uh, so what you actually need to have in, in this example, we have open telemetry collector, but it, it can be something else. But essentially what you do, you need to plug into uh, the broker stuff somehow and get the metrics out. You can use JMX receiver in open telemetry collector. Things get even more tricky here because the default distribution doesn't come with Java runtime. So you would need to build your custom thing or use some collector. I don't know, Splunk provides one um, and you can actually use it for not, not Splunk. There are more things you can get from the open telemetry collector like the Kafka metrics receiver. It's based on the Golang Kafka SDK, so Rama that actually can pull some limited information through the public API it provides, and you can um, get this matrix uh, in some way. It's just metrics. There is nothing more that you can get out of the broker. Um, so things get complicated uh, a bit here. Uh, but let, let's dive a little bit into every area that we have here. So. We just mentioned up telemetry gives you a stable API, SDK, all the core that you need to send data somewhere. The instrumentation libraries that can, and you can share them, right? You know, one, uh, the community creates a library, anyone can use this library. The interesting part here is the semantic conventions is the contract between the instrumentation and somebody who consumes this telemetry, right? So we are saying which telemetry to collect and what should, like the schema, of this telemetry B. So it's something you can hopefully depend upon and build your visualization dashboards alerts based on. Okay, so uh, one of the things you get out of the box right now from uh, Kafka instrumentations is usually distributed tracing. You can uh, trace the message flow. Uh, here it's a very simple example with just two services, but normally you would have more. But here you can see, okay, I had an incoming HTTP request, post orders, I published the message, I uh, processed it on the consumer, um, I acknowledge it, so uh, I can move on to the next message. Uh, from this view you understand, okay, what happened with the message, uh, you see the, the latency of each step. The reason it works is that we have context propagated within the message. Um, it gets a little bit more tricky with batching, but uh, the, the principles remain the same. Um, and this visualization is only possible because of the semantic conventions, because we have a telemetry expressed in a standard way, so tools can visualize it without knowing much about our instrumentation. Um, the nicer part is uh, additional context you get on the message, uh, on the spans. So for example, you have a client ID. This is something we will use a lot during this talk. This is effectively the only correlation you get from uh, between the Kafka side of things and um, uh, open telemetry side of things. And uh, there are other uh, properties of the message or any operation that you can see here, like the partition ID, you would see the consumer group here, uh, the message offset message key would also be here. So based on this, you can build your own queries, you can build a bunch of other things, um, alerts, dashboards. Okay, so let's quickly look at the metrics that we have documented, but not implemented. Uh, so the metrics uh, are cool to understand overall state and health with Kafka with messaging with high throughput. You might not afford all the traces. Also, if you have batches of size, I don't know, thousands, then distributed tracing is, is not so useful. Uh, and you would probably rely a lot on metrics to understand just what, what, what's going on overall. Um, Metrics are aggregated, right? They are extremely cheap comparing to traces in terms of storage and querying. So metrics are used as, a, uh, as an optimization. Um, specifically for messaging, we have defined operation duration. You can get specific operation percentiles from this duration. Uh, you can derive a bunch of things like throughput, but with again, with batching, it's, uh, 
more complicated, so we will need to also have metrics for the message counts. And from up on telemetry standpoint, we try to put everything that, that's of a low cardinality uh, on this metric. So again, you would see consumer group, partition ID, everything like this um, on, on metrics. There are more things to come in up on telemetry, like flag delivery count. The problem I mentioned, okay, we have it documented that the, there are very few instrumentations that implement those metrics. Um, just a quick uh, summary of what I just discussed. This is the uh, semantic convention we defined for client operation and all the dimensions you can see there. Um, now, what else can we get? So there are metrics coming from Kafka client. Why don't we use this? Why do we even need something new from up in telemetry? And sorry, you probably don't see it well, but I, I'll just quickly go through it. So if you use Java uh, Kafka instrumentation, it will pull some metrics from the SDK. It will give you some decent amount of information to build a basic dashboard. You will get throughput, you will get latency, just the average and max. You would get a lot of things about the connectivity and Kafka internals. Um, as you can see, uh, there is, uh, I think the most important part is the consumer lag. So when the lag grows, and as Shivanshu talked about, when the lag grows, it means that your consumers are not able to catch up on what producers are producing, right? And if you depend on, if it's a time sensitive thing, then you just get in a bigger, bigger, and bigger backlog of things. Uh, and it's not, not always clear what the problem is. And if we look into the metrics, I think that there are a couple of uh, problems. Why don't we just use what Kafka provides? First, it's very language and client specific. .NET and Java produce quite different set of metrics. Uh, Kafka folks are trying to unify things, but uh, they get tricky other ways. Um, the key part though, that they don't provide context. So the only correlation they have across metrics is the client ID. And if you wanna get topic, partition, consumer group, if you wanna break down things by, by these dimensions, you will struggle with it because there is no context. Uh, when it comes to the broker metrics, the story is kind of similar. Um, you get a bunch of metrics from the broker, um, they are useful for the broker internals, but uh, they don't provide context to actually go and investigate. Here you see the number of messages, requests received, and the only dimension it has is the operation name, fetch or produce. Go figure out if something goes wrong. Um, with this, I'm passing it over to Shivanshu to give you a quick demo. Thank you, Ludmila. And so basically, if you are using Open Telemetry to collect uh, metrics and spans from your client, and you, are, you want to collect uh, metrics from Kafka, there are different ways to do it. You can have a JMX receiver in Hotel Collector, which can fetch all the metrics from different JMX servers of the corresponding brokers. Or you can have a standalone JMX metrics gatherer, which is scraping metrics from JMX servers. Or you can have a Prometheus JMX agent installed in every uh, Kafka broker. So let's see it on a demo. Um, so first of all, I want to show uh, the client spans and what attributes does it contain. So you can see, since this is instrumented from uh, Kafka, Open element Instrumentation, all the messaging related uh, attributes are there. What I want to show is, uh, let's say, if I want to take a look at a given consumer group, uh, given partition, and want to see uh, the corresponding metrics for that, for, for all the spans that are uh, reading and writing from a given partition, I can write some SQL like this, uh, which would, in, if I run this, this would give me all the triplet of client ID, service instance ID, and service name, which then I can use to capture all the metrics for that triplet. So let's see uh, how it would actually look like if you implement this backend and uh, collect all the metrics. So for a given consume, so inherently the problem is you can create all the metrics uh, dashboards using the ambience collected from Kafka, but these metrics does not correlate well uh, with spans. 
But if you instrument it with uh, open telemetry, you can actually do that. If I look at the native consumer group lag, then the problem is I can see that the consumer group lag, there's a spike in the consumer group lag. But what I cannot understand is uh, this consumer group lag is on the given consumer group one, given partition, given topic, but I don't know which consumer services are responsible for this. So if we do the correlations right, we can actually do that. So if I want to look at this particular, so there are multiple consumer group, topic, and partition combination here. But I see there's some spike, uh, periodic spike here. If I go and click that, I can see at that particular spike what all consumer services are writing to that partition, what is the corresponding throughput and average message size. I can also see what are the producer services writing, writing to that particular, particular topic and partition combination. And I can do some correlation on top of traces to spans. So this network latency is coming from the, the correlation that I was showing. So you can basically capture some matrix for the corresponding spans. And um, we can also get some interesting data. So for example, if I want to take a look at uh, how much time a message is spent uh, in, the given, uh, in the given Kafka partition. So for a given producer-consumer combination, if I select some timestamp, for example, 10 milliseconds, this would give me, OK, out of 43k spans, 2.4k uh, spans were there in Kafka for more than 10 milliseconds for this producer-consumer services combination. And you can actually get the corresponding trace ID for it, and then you can drill down on why it's happening. And probably this is because of some misconfiguration on the producer or consumer side. You may want to fine tune that. And you can correlate and get the matrix of your corresponding producer and consumer services. Um, so in overall, uh, if you implement the, uh, if, you, if, if you utilize the semantic conventions and uh, implement some correlation on top of it, uh, what Open Telemetry provides is a lot of deeper insights into what we have today. I can invite Ludmila to help us understand semantic conventions. Yeah, so as you can see, there is a lot more work that we need to do to make messaging observability better. Uh, and if you are interested, we are welcome to you to participate in our either messaging semantic conventions group. Um, we are happy with any contributions, any thoughts, any problems, come join us. Um, you can also go in and prove uh, existing instrumentations. Uh, so there are a bunch of them that need some love. And if you, if you depend on them, come help us. We will be more than happy to help you with this in open telemetry. But even more importantly, if you want mm, the perfect observability, maybe you should reach out to your favorite Kafka client library and ask them to uh, do the native instrumentation. Or maybe you can contribute. Well, and if you know somebody at Apache Kafka or Confluent, let's, let's work. Tell them that we would really love to work together and provide a better story for our users. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Do we have any Thank questions? We still have time. Thank you a lot, Yudmila and Shivan Shu. Yeah, questions. Here we go. My question is about context propagation and um, making decisions uh, about how to assemble the traces together. Right now we have these modes where it's like some of our users want to do parent-child propagation. Others don't want that. Others, there, there's some flows where we really want span um, links instead of having parent-child. Uh, do you have any suggestions, strategy, solutions for doing those sort of per message uh, 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 decisions. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, okay. uh, so for the context propagation part, um, from the client side instrumentation, there's header injected in the in the producer's uh, request. So through that, the correlation happen uh, with the context is remain throughout the Kafka, and because Kafka does not manipulate the headers, injected headers. And for the span links, uh, I think Ludmila can answer that better. 
Yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, I also see that some people really want parent-child relationship and they want one trace. Other people think that, okay, this we want smaller traces and we don't want them to become too big or go too deep and we want to break things down. And sometimes it's also the application specific, right? So if you if you do some real time processing, you maybe want one parent, uh, you want parent child. If you do like indexing afterwards, you might not want to correlate this additional I don't know indexer or archiving thing that uh, to to the original flow. Uh, so we've debated this in semantic conventions what we want to do, and we came up with the following that by default you must provide a link. You may provide a parent child as well. You still keep the link. And we recommend making it disableable, the parent child. So the instrumentation should ideally give you an option, the user an option to say, uh, I don't, for this service, I don't want to have a parent child relationship. I don't think we can give the make the single behavior working for everyone, so we will make it configurable, but we will have to provide some default. Has there been any discussion about per message decisions? Per message decisions, oh no, wow, that's interesting. No. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was asking. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to learn more, let's catch up after. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't, we maybe have one more minute if there are any other questions. Yeah, any other questions? I don't see anyone. Uh, oh, yeah, last minute. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the talks, and it's pretty impressive. I'm just a little bit curious about like the suggestions over the cardinality, because I saw one page you've been suggesting to keep the low cardinality when I were getting those messages. So I'm just curious, like in real cases, what would be the suggested or any recommendations when trying to define in the uh, the metrics to make sure it stays low cardinalities, as well as to make sure it's also functional to do with curing, because I feel like there's like to find a balance in between. Also, I noticed that uh, during the demo cases, uh, you've been using the ClickHouse as the backend to deal with the Curious, just curious, like what is the valuations over that? Like, is that also relative to the cardinality as like to support for like the bad performance of query, or is more like the functionality to empower for the query? So I think that depends on the use case. What we have learned from our customers is uh, the the kind of queries they want to run. We have optimized our schema. We have some attributes as the primary index column so that the queries are fast but there are some problems when you want to do some inner joins, um, and then you have to figure out a solution for that. So like the short answer for the cardinality is depends on the use case, and um, for the SQL query optimization, you need to fine tune your schemas, um, and you probably can have different materialized views um, to be able to run some queries faster. And does that answer your question? Yeah. 